Hey there, welcome back to the channel. If you're a .NET developer, really if you're a developer of any kind, one of the things that's very, very important in a lot of applications is time, especially if you're looking at like an IoT device where you're collecting telemetry. Oftentimes that telemetry is time stamped and time is very, very important. However, on embedded devices, it's not always an easy thing to get. Let's take a look at these devices here. I've got a Raspberry Pi 5 here. Here's a Raspberry Pi 0. Here's a Meadow F7 Feather. One common trait among all of these is they don't have an accurate way to give you time. Now, if you're on a network, you can go to NTP and get this time. In fact, all of these devices will automatically do that for you. And that's fine if you're in a situation where you've got a network connection. Oftentimes, embedded devices, though, may be using cellular, they may be turning off their network in order to save power. So how do you deal with having time accurate for your records, for your uh, data collection, your telemetry, and still be able to, you know, come up without a network or shut off the network and only turn it on periodically? The solution to that is what's called a real-time clock. And here's an example uh, real-time clock module. Oftentimes they're just abbreviated to an RTC. So we have a chip here and there is typically an oscillator on here as well. This one I think has it built in. This is a DS3231, which is a pretty common one. There are several others, but the common thing that you'll see with these is you'll have a chip and then you have a battery. So this is a battery backed chip so that even when your device powers off, it stays powered and keeps time. The accuracy of these depends on the part. Some of them are accurate to within, say, a second or two per month drift. Some of them just a fraction of a second, even over a year. So the more that you pay for it really is the, the more accurate they get. But something like this 3231, it's very inexpensive. And I think it's got a drift of maybe like one to two seconds per month as long as you're connecting to uh, a NTP server and you can pull that down within, say, a day or a week and verify that the time on this is correct, that's usually good enough for most applications. So let's take a look and see how we would use one of these. And if you don't have one, what kind of the effects are in an application? I'm going to run these tests on this hardware. We have a Raspberry Pi Zero here not using the display or anything else, but it also has this same real-time clock connected up over here. This is on the I squared C bus, so it's got power, ground, and uh, data and clock line that come back to the Raspberry Pi. Let's take a look at the clock time on both the Raspberry Pi and say my PC, which has an accurate time. On both, you can use the date command. So on the Raspberry Pi, you can see it is 0939, and on my PC, it's 1053, so about an hour and 15 minutes, something like that. It's off by over an hour at any rate. So let's take a look at what this looks like in code. I have code here that is going to read the uh, system clock. This will give us basically the same uh, value that date command did. And then I have another utility that will go out over the network and get the, uh, the NTP time. So it's just an NTP query. And then it compares the two. I have the NTP client on the Raspberry Pi turned off right now to try to simulate the scenario where you don't have a network connection. So if I run this test, you can see that the hardware so the clock that the OS is using says it is 1440. NTP says it is 1554. So we're off by an hour, 13 minutes and 21 seconds. Let's take a look at how this manifests itself as a problem when you're running an application. Let's say I have this application and really all I'm doing is simulating some data grabs. So what happens is I'm going to grab 25 samples and I'm going to simulate a time sync. So let's say 
a connection to the network that allows NTP to update the system clock, something along those lines. And it's going to happen after we've collected 10 samples. So imagine the device boots up, um, you're out in the field, it starts collecting some telemetry data, and then it connects to the network to send that data. And at that point, it gets an NTP connection and sets our time. You can probably already see uh, in your mind how this is a problem, but let's run this through the simulation. It's going to collect these, it sleeps between them for a random amount of time between 300 and 1500 milliseconds, just grabbing some random data and then dumps it out at the end. You can see that what we've got is we've got this initial data here, and then in our data set, all of a sudden our time jumps. And so if you're sending this to a back end, and right now this is off by an hour and 15, it could be off by days, weeks, depends on what the initialization of the clock uh, of your system is when it boots up. So then you have to try to figure out how to reconcile these two. Now you could have a service that, you know, maybe record the time, the UTC time at boot, and then have a service that watches the clock and when it gets updated from NTP, determines the difference and then does that subtraction. That would work, depends on a few things, depends on you being able to know when the clock got updated. It also depends on the drift of the clock. So let's say the system clock uh, drifts maybe 10 seconds, 15 seconds a day. Pretty common to see that kind of a drift. Then even these times with that delta could be off by, you know, 10, 15 seconds. Depends on how accurate the time needs to be. But even if you're down to, you know, within 10, 15 seconds, uh, that's what's important to you. You've got this huge delta here that you have to then either reconcile before you send or figure out how to reconcile it at the back end. This can be a real pain and it adds to a lot of challenge in making sure you have clean data for display or analysis. So the solution here is to use something like an RTC that you always have on board. You set it one time, say when you commission the device, when you send it out to the field, when you build the device, something like that. And then what you do is when you start up, you automatically read the RTC and set the system clock. And then when you get an NTP update, maybe periodically, once a day, once a week, something like that, you can verify and reset the real-time clock's value to whatever the NTP is. Let's go take a look at how that looks in code if we're using an RTC on the platform. Basically, this is the same application, but at startup in Initialize, I'm going to create an instance of this DS3231. And again, it's connected to the I squared C bus. And then that RTC is used down here to get the time for our samples. Previously, you can see that I would call get current time which would either use NT or UTC now or go get the NTP time. But now the RTC is the source of truth for time. I will not ever go to the uh, date time now function to get date time. I will always get it from the real time clock. Now, if I run the application, as you would expect, the time does not jump in mid data. As you can see, the NTP and real-time clock times are identical. The hardware is still off by an hour and 15, but if you look at the data in the store, there is no gap. There is no jump in time. There is no moving backward in time. It's very solid. As I said, I prefer to use the RTC as the source of truth for time, but occasionally you may have libraries that use date time now or UTC now or other code that does. And so what you want to do is you want that time to be accurate. So you can, in fact, after you initialize, you can simply use the device platform OS 
using the meadow stack. This will set the clock regardless of the platform that you're on. And then from that point on calling UTC now or date time now will give you an accurate time. Again, the oscillator or the clock in the OS is not as accurate as a real time clock. So even if you do this here, you will see after say a day or so, the time between what the RTC and the system says will have drifted apart. So you probably want to do this periodically, not just at application startup. And there you have it. That's how you use a real time clock in your .NET application. That's all I've got for today. Thanks for watching.